you get a difference of squares, which reduces to a single term rather than two terms. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's much better. So, uh, but you know, you can't just multiply by one plus sine u, right? That would change the value. Yeah. Like, I mean, if I multiply by that, that would change it. I, I'm not multiplying by one. So what have I got to do? Multiply by. Multiply by this, right? That's one. I'm multiplying by one, and now on the bottom, what am I getting? So on the top, just never mind, right? The, left, the top will take care of itself. It's the denominator that's a problem, having two terms down there like that, right? So, um, so now what do I get downstairs? Well, I could say 1 minus sine squared if you want to show that step in between. Um, so I'm, I want this to be the secant u. So this is an equivalent statement, right? So I just multiplied the left side by 1. So I guess provided that sine u is not negative 1, right? So I'm assuming that you know, where is sine u equal to negative 1? Well, u is not equal to negative pi over 2 is what I'm saying, right? Because that would take me down to negative 1 on the unit circle, right? So, so again, there's a little caveat here. But if, if u were equal to negative sine, negative pi over 2, neither of these would be defined because we'd have division by 0, right? Cosine is 0 here, right? This is 1 over cosine, so it would be 1 over 0 at that point. So that's really not a problem. If I'm, I'm, I'm sort of assuming that u is not equal to pi over 2 or negative pi over 2 anyway, right? So I get to here. Now I can replace this on, in the denominator. Or shall I distribute on the numerator? Let's go ahead and distribute on the numerator, because I think that's what's going to end up being useful. Um, right? And so that's over cosine squared u. So, you know, this is what we want to say. Is this always true? Well, what can I do now? You know, maybe I should have left this the way it was, huh? Yeah, it was better the way it was, wasn't it? Why? One over cosine secant? Yeah, well, I can cancel a factor of cosine now, right? Again, I'm assuming that cosine is not zero, but that's, that's already the assumption, right? So, um, so I, now I can say 1 plus sine u over cosine u. Does that equal to secant u? Is it obvious yet? You're saying it's obvious now. Why? Yeah, so I can split up the numerator over a common denominator. That's okay, right? I find that when people start doing this, they start doing crazy things, like saying, well, the reciprocal of secant is cosine, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So if I were to take the reciprocal of the sum, I'd get cosine plus cotangent, which is false, right? Because you have to take the reciprocal of the whole thing, not just each individual thing. Um, so, but yeah, this is, I would say this is now obvious, and to make, just to make, drive it home, right? Split up the numerator over the common denominator. That's allowed, right? And yes, that's true. One over cosine, that's the reciprocal identity for secant, and sine over cosine is the reciprocal identity for tangent. So, uh, we're there, right? So we wrote a sequence of equivalent equations, only working with the left side, and you know, using properties of equality multiplied by one, that doesn't change the value. Um, uh, we could use a Pythagorean identity from here to here. Then uh, we can uh, reduce by a common factor. That's a fundamental principle of fractions. And then we can split up a numerator over a common denominator. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, you can work with both sides separately, but uh, let's, we got uh, uh, five minutes, six minutes. Uh, let's, oh my goodness, there are 100 and, uh, 118 problems at the end of this section. That's an indication that they want you to practice this a lot because it requires practice, 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 right? So um, let's, let's do, okay, so um, um, we can go by 12s, I don't know. Um, so. Uh, Simplify the trigonometric. So we're just, and in this one, we're not proving an identity. We're just simplifying an expression, right? Would you say that we simplified the left side here? Yes. 
Yeah. Kind yeah. of. I, I mean, this, okay. this denominator, like you said, is fairly complicated, right? Having a difference like that in the denominator. Whereas here, we're just adding two trig functions, right? So that's quite a bit simpler. So uh, in proving this identity, we also found a way of simplifying this expression. We can always replace it with that expression, right? Okay, so um, number 12, you want to simplify cotangent theta over cosecant minus psi. <laughs> Forgot it already. Uh, cotangent, I'll get this thing, that's what I thought. Okay. Cotangent theta over cosecant theta minus sine theta. And the instruction is not to prove any identity, just to simplify this. And in some sense, we're going to develop an identity, right? This expression is always identical to some simpler expression. Uh, and so one strategy here, you know, there are six trig functions, right? But it, all, they can all be reduced to sine and cosine, right? All the trig functions can be related in terms of sine and cosine. So that's one strategy, is take all your non-sine, non-cosine functions and write them in terms of sine and cosine, and then try to simplify that and see what you get. There's also the other flavor of that, which is everything can be written in terms of secant and tangent. That's another. So there's, there's, I think of it. For what? Cosine and sine. Well, secant and tangent are also. You'll, you'll get used to it. It's it's um, it's another sort of work, but yeah, it works just as well. So cotangent is cosine over sine, and cosecant is one over sine. Um, okay, so now we have, you know, we, we made it worse, right? We've got now a complex fraction. Uh, can, we, can we make it better again? Uh, yes. How? Oh. Well, how would you simplify this? You can always write a complex fraction as a simple fraction. What do you do? Yeah, multiply the top and bottom by sine, right? It's multiplying by one again. That's always a lot. You can always multiply by one. Here, of course, we're assuming that theta is not um, any multiple of pi. Right? Because that would, that would mean that's zero over zero. But we're already assuming that because, um, uh, you know, uh, cosecant is not defined if uh, theta is a multiple of pi. Uh, neither is cotangent, right? So in all of this, that, that's an implicit assumption. Okay, so then what do you get on the top? Well, the sines cancel here, right? And you get cosine. And on the bottom, you get one minus sine That's squared. Good. Are we done? Is that simpler? No, actually it's still a you know, trig function divided by a difference, right? Maybe it's even worse, because one of them is a square. Well, we, we can use the well, uh, identity. Yeah. The Pythagorean identity. Okay. All right, you're getting that Pavlovian response. That's good. Whenever you see one minus sine squared, you should just say, oh, yeah, I'm going to make that cosine. <laughs> uh, so this becomes cosine theta over cosine squared theta. Is that simplified? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Then you reduce by a factor of cosine, you get one over cosine. Is there another name for that? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, is secant simpler than one over cosine? Yes. That's kind of a toss up, really. I um, mean, that's what secant means, right, um, in some sense. So, but yeah, I would say now we have simplified this, you know, complicated trigonometric expression is actually equivalent to this, provided that, uh, does now the proviso matter? Is this thing defined in a multiple of pi? Yeah, a cosine of, of, of pi is uh, negative one, right? cosine of zero is, is one. So this would be defined at um, these points where none of these were defined. So where do we lose it? Well, when we multiply it by sine over sine, we're losing the fact that sine can't be zero. Here, sine can be zero, then we're dividing by one, right? So we should add the proviso at the end. These are identical provided that um, um, theta is not some integer, but k is an integer here, right? K, uh, theta is not some integer multiple of pi. Well, I guess we're out of time. How did that happen? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I will put some identities on uh, my open map. Uh, we will. Uh,
um, uh, you know, I recommend you look at the problems in the book, Thanks for too. Thanks, Yeah, and uh, if you have something you want me to take off.